Undoubtedly, it's been a big year for grinders, but when I think back, nearly, if not every single one of them, has been a single dosing lower tension option. But Ranchilio just dropped its brand new hopper based grinder, the Stele. Intended for both home and commercial applications, it appears to be built to take some serious use. On the outside, it shares their classic, understated, and straightforward design, and on the inside, it sports some 58mm steel flat burrs and a grind-on-demand touchpad with two programmable options. But as always, the question is, how does its design and features translate into making coffee in the real world? So in this video, I'll be getting to the bottom of that question, going over its features, its workflow, performance, and its downsides. But first, the disclosure. The folks over at Rancilio sent me this grinder just a little over a month ago, but they swore me to secrecy because at that point, it was currently unreleased. Yet, as always, they've had no access to my draft or final review, so the thoughts and feelings presented here are mine and mine alone. But with that said, let's dive in. One of the main charms of Ranchilio's equipment is its simplistic, approachable, and intuitive design, and the Stile is no different. Up top you've got the hopper, which holds plus or minus 300 grams of coffee. This feeds down into the burrs, a set of 58mm steel flats spinning at 1200 RPM. Engaging the burrs can be done in two different ways, either by the touchscreen keypad that has two adjustable time settings with a third on-demand function, or you can enable the portafilter switch for hands-free grinding. Changing the grind timing is very simple. Just press and hold the option you want to edit. When the plus and minus symbols appear, you can change the grind time by fractions of a second. To enter the portafilter activation mode, just press and hold either shop button and the on-demand button until the screen flashes to verify the change. And lastly, the grind size is adjusted via dials on both sides of the grinder. The adjustments themselves aren't stepless and have an audible click. But they have a wide range and can go from espresso all the way to French press. And just to put that into perspective, to change from a dialed-in espresso to a French press, it takes a total of 80 clicks coarser. As simple as the Stile is, there is a lot to talk about regarding its performance. And since its main selling point is its grind by time options, I think we should start there. So let's talk about back to back consistency. When dialed in and grinding for an 18 gram espresso dose, I ran 10 shots and weighed out the results. Between each dose, there was a max difference of 0.5 grams, which isn't bad but can be noticeable in brewing with espresso, where a missing half gram can possibly change the extraction time of a shot. On a filter setting, the results were a bit wider, with a 0.9 gram difference between 10, 20 gram doses. Now, this variance I think comes down to the difference in grind speed in relation to grind setting. So, when I tested the speed of three basic grind settings, the results matched my expectations. When grinding fine on the Stile, it put out 1.6 grams per second, 2.5 grams per second on medium, and 3 grams per second on coarse. So to summarize, with finer being slower and coarser being faster, it's much easier to overshoot your grind weight on coarser grinds than it is on finer. Another one of the main marketing points for the Stile is its quieter operation, but I think quieter can be subjective. With just the motor running, it sits at a relatively subtle mid 60 decibels. And when you add coffee to it, it jumps up to a reasonable low to mid 70s. When it comes to hopper-based grinders, I find that they often have a good amount of static, but the Stile runs and doses pretty cleanly. And I'm sure there's at least one of you out there who's wondering how this grinder performs as a single doser. And I'm here to say, better than expected. After making sure it was pretty well cleared out, I set one of the grind timers to the max 20 seconds to ensure that it was able to get all the beans through and any loose grinds whipped out. After 10 shots tested using an 18 gram dose, the Stile retained a surprisingly low 0.2 grams max, which I have to say is pretty respectable considering it's not designed or intended for single dosing. And last but certainly not least, the main event, let's talk about brewing. When dialed in, the espresso shots I produced from the Stile were flavorful, balanced, and nicely textured. The burrs themselves don't really produce a whole lot of clarity, so I found myself enjoying more of those lower acidity chocolate forward coffees on espresso. With filter coffee, the brew again leaned heavily towards balance and fell short on clarity, but on the flip side it provided a lot of complexity, so on nuanced single origins there was still a lot going on in the cup. 
and for both methods the extractions fell well within the specialty standards of 18 to 22 percent. Even though the Stele is marketed and capable of being an all-around grinder, it seems it was built, designed, and engineered with Espresso clearly in mind. For example, the portafilter grind mode, the double and single shot icons, and the fact that this grinder matches their Espresso machines. But the biggest clue is just the sheer effort it takes to swap between Espresso and filter, and then back again. When dialed into Espresso, you'll need to move at the very least 20 clicks, but most likely more. And when you want to go back, you'll need to grind through your remaining beans or remove the hopper and all the coffee, as adjusting finer requires the burrs to be running. Now, this is a common hopper-based grinder workflow, but having used single dozers for years now, it just feels like a lot. And goes to show why the Stele is better suited for one method and not both. And speaking of, another quirk to be aware of when it comes to hopper-based grinders, especially those that use a grind-by-time platform, you'll need to keep the hopper relatively full to maintain a consistent dose size. Without the additional weight forcing the beans closest to the burrs down, the yield of the doses begins to be less and less consistent. And lastly, if you're into smaller doses for your espresso, I'd say under 17 grams, you know you'll need to grind a bit finer. But grinding that fine for the Stele begins to produce clumps, which is why I bumped all my tests up to 18 grams for this review. In the end, there's really no debate that Rancilio knows what they're doing around coffee gear. The Stele itself continues to carry the torch for Rancilio's simple and approachable design and usability. And the most important aspect, brewing coffee, it produces quality cups regardless of your brew method. And in my humble opinion, it's a big step up in terms of aesthetics and performance from their original grinder, the Rocky. Its mostly metal construction feels incredibly solid, and its compact footprint in terms of both height and width makes it a great option for those with minimal space. But with a price tag of $650, it is bumping up against the heavy hitter in the home hopper range, the Malconic X54. In the end, I think the Stele is a welcome addition to the market for those looking to keep their coffee routine simple, minimizing fuss, and maximizing their available space. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Stele? And also, what are your thoughts on hopper-based grinders? Are you surprised to see them coming back into the market for more home-based users? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.